Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. For a determinedly budget focused watch review channel, there is one big budget brand that is woefully underrepresented on Just One More Watch, to this point anyway, and that is Timex. I've actually only reviewed two of their models. I reviewed the Q when it was super hot towards the end of last year and the M79, the automatic version thereof, shortly after. And there is a reason for that, I know why. I bought a Timex Expedition a couple of years ago and it was the single noisiest watch that I have ever encountered. I could hear it ticking, I could hear every single second of my life ebbing away, which isn't something I was all that comfortable with. So I put it in the back of a sock drawer and I sold it the next week on eBay from where I bought it. And that one bad experience, that can do it sometimes. It can kind of put you off a brand. But that's all about to change. I picked up this Waterbury Chronograph last month and I bought last week what I think might be the new super hot Timex for the tail end of 2020. More on that later. Now the thumbnail says 55 US dollars today. There are some specific buying instructions. I will of course leave links in in the description of the video as always. These ones seem to start at around $70 on Amazon, plenty of different colorways, around $60 on eBay. $55 refers to the price that they were on drop.com last month for a selection of colors, including this one. Now I've got no association with drop.com. Do your own digging, do your own research, find the best price for your local currency, but don't forget that is likely to come up again in a few months time. You can always set an alert. You can put in a request to be notified. For 55 bucks, there is an awful lot to like about this, not a lot to dislike. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. $55 for a chronograph from a brand with the history, with the recognition and with the respect that Timex gets. That has got to be a bit of a bargain, hasn't it? Regardless of what I show you when I pop the lid on the very nice little box but it's an attractive looking, well thought out and very wearable watch as well, I think. I've been most impressed with this one. I was also impressed to see the usual instruction manual, social media instructions down here as well, hang tag and two year warranty. Now, considering that is a quartz chronograph, don't be kidding yourself, you weren't getting a mechanical for $55. I think that is great. And in the tradition of Timex's of old, it is a clean, nicely designed, I think it's legible, it's wearable, it is eminently practical and well thought out. Great set of dimensions as well. The classic 4020, by that I mean 40 mil diameter and 20 mil lug width, about 12.2 mil thick and 46 mil lug to lug. On the supplied leather strap, which is remarkably nice for the money. I'll show you that in more detail later on. This one weighs in at 56 grams, so a nice light piece if you were gonna wear it as a daily. Three piece stainless steel case construction. We have got a piece of domed, just mildly domed mineral crystal. You don't get sapphire for your 55 bucks along with the brand recognition of Timex, but it is looks like a kind of thick piece of mineral and you can see some nice kind of old fashioned, old school distortions towards the edge of the viewing angle there as well. Case finishing is remarkably simple, high polished throughout on this model. Don't expect luxury finishing here because you ain't gonna get it. Unsigned crown and just plain pushers for the chrono. But I think a remarkably nice printed case back for the money. Designed and engineered by Timex and the world map here. Now the Waterbury collection, that refers to the fact that the Timex Corporation, as it is now, was once the Waterbury Clock Company when it first formed back in 1854. So like I said, a bunch of history and heritage for your 55 bucks. You don't get it made in Dundee. They used to have a factory in Dundee in Scotland. This one you can just about see there made in the Philippines, but a nice push on case back, only 30 meters of water resistance, but it's a chrono, it's on a leather strap. You're not really gonna be getting this one wet. It's not that style. You do get quick release spring bars on that leather strap though. And it is by far and away the nicest strap that I've come across on a watch for under a hundred dollars. Timex there, quick release as discussed and stamped SB Foot Tanning Company, Red Wing, Minnesota, USA. So the watch may have been made in the Philippines, but the strap at least came from Minnesota and we have matching Timex branded high polished buckle and tang. So a nice clean printed dial with three sub dials. So it's a dual register 30 minute chronograph. That's the two sub dials at the top. The sub dial at the bottom above the sixth there with the Waterbury branding 
is a ticking small second. I think a small second is always a great idea with quartz. It really lessens the impact of the fact that it's a quartz module in the back. You barely notice the ticking second, far less noticeable than if it was a, a long ticking second, for example. So one push of the top chrono pusher engages the chrono timer. Then you can see the, the chrono hand ticking away. If you press it to stop it, this register here will register down to 1 20th of a second. You can start it again, see it ticking away, stop it again, again registering in between the markers, so a 20th of a second, and resetting back to zero, up to a maximum of 30 minutes as discussed. Everything just printed on. I do like the color tones. They've gone for a kind of creamy, very pale brown against the black dial. Nice and legible, nice large legible Arabics, the whole thing very, very practical, and a simple but nicely proportioned handset, all in just high polished silver. There is a bit of loom on those hands, but this watch also has another little party piece after dark. I'll put the loom video up there. You can see a little bit of loom on the hour hand and the minute hand. So the loom on the hands is only gonna get you so far, but when you press the crown, you get the Indiglo function, fantastic. The whole dial lights up. That is obviously gonna suck the batteries. It contains a Timex T921 module in here. It's one of their own in-house quartz chronograph calibers. I can't find any information on how long the battery lasts. I'm guessing around two years, but I'm guessing if you press that Indiglo button as often as I'd be tempted to, it's not gonna last that long. One other feature to note with this movement is if you pull the crown out to the first position, it doesn't actually hack. You can see the second hand is still ticking away. It allows you to move the hour hand in one hour increments. So genuinely useful for global travelers on a budget. If you're crossing time zones, you can adjust that without having to reset the watch. Pull it out, you get a big snap here of the crown and that brings it into adjustment mode. With the first one, when you're just moving the hours, that is how you adjust the date. It's kind of not like quite a, a quick date, there we are, but it's pretty much the same as on my Omega Aquaterra, so it is in good company given the price. That's it on wrist, I've got a seven inch wrist, 40-20, short lug to lug, wears very nicely, and that strap is great. Really comfortable, good high quality stitching, but obviously because it has those quick release spring bars, you can swap it out for any 20 mil lug width straps that you happen to have lying around the house. As I said, the handset is simple, but nicely proportioned, good clean legibility available from this one as confirmed by the overhead shot as well. Not sure how much anti-reflective coating they've put on the mineral crystal, but you don't expect miracles for 55 bucks. Outside on a rare damp and dingy day today in Sydney. Yeah, there's a bit of flecto coming off that dial, but you see what I mean about the nice vintage distortion you get from the edges of the viewing angle. Short lug to lug, 55 grams, comfortable strap, an easy watch to wear long-term this one, I think. But what are my moans and niggles? Well, prices for these do vary, and obviously this makes a lot more sense at 55 to 60 US dollars than it does at the 120 plus. I've seen some listings on Amazon, so if you are keen on one of these, like I said, bide your time, be patient, shop around, and get it at a price that suits you. And a low budget, lightweight quartz watch always does tend to feel like a low budget, lightweight quartz watch. They've just got a bit of tinniness about them that you don't necessarily get with an automatic. But like I said, we shouldn't expect miracles. And then there is the date placement. Really, that is my biggest complaint about this watch. It is pretty brutal, hacked in there at the four o'clock and with a non-color match date wheel. Some of the other versions, I believe the kind of brown dial one does have a color match date wheel, but not with this black one. Personally, that dial would have gone from a seven and a half out of 10 to a nine and a half out of 10 if they had deleted the date altogether. But it's quartz, it's a daily, it's a practical watch. I understand why they did it, but I wish they had done it just a little bit better than they have. But overall, very impressive watch. If you're looking for a budget chrono around this size and you can pick one up for the right price, and it's certainly gone some ways to redeeming Timex in my eyes after my disappointing experience with the Noisy Expedition. So much so that as I alluded in the intro, I bought another Timex that I think could be the hot watch from them towards the end of this year. It is this one, a Milano model. More than a whiff of Vacheron Constantine about it, but for less than a hundred bucks. You can expect to see a review of that on the channel shortly.
So there you have it, a big brand chronograph for 55 US dollars. This is definitely one of the most impressive budget watches that I have reviewed this year. It's the type of watch you can pick it up in the colorway of your choice, leave it in the corner of your watch box, wear it occasionally, and you'll get great value out of it over a number of years or even decades. They can take a licking and keep on ticking. Thanks for watching. I will see you in a future video.